Welcome back to Dumpster Dive! And our second attempt at trying to do this because I hate my ISP. I mean, I, I love, love them. Love. <laughs> yeah, so... Bleach episode 12, because they decided not to put up two episodes at once, because... I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, actually. Come on, Japan, I got both up to 12, 13. Well, first, let's go over some silliness. Katagiri. Some places list her as Megan Hollingshead. So what I think it is, and pretty sure so what you yes. think it is too. Yeah. Some places don't list her as Laura Post. You know, Yelon from Genshin or Yellen. Or R4 from Nap. I call bullshit on that one, I'm gonna be honest. What, is it because you watched Platinum End? Yes. Platinum End. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, pretty sure it's Megan Hollyside. Whatever, though. Izumi, meanwhile, um, you know, Ryukin's mama, now some places are listing it as Karen Strassman. Instead of Alice and Picard. No, no, it is not. I'm sorry, that is another one. I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> Though this one, I can at least understand some confusion. She does sound kind of like her, I guess, but... For a couple lines here and there, but not Yeah, but no, after no. these two full episodes, it is 100% not her. But hey, Sheremi Lee was confirmed as young Misaki. You know, the obvious one that we could tell. No and, way. And Ellen Stern is back as older Misaki, from, who just recorded one episode preview. I think my favorite one, though... Is uh, Ryukin over there? Some people listing young Ryukin as Josh Keaton. You know, Ocelot from MGS3. No. God, this is getting so confusing with multiple sources reporting on different voice actors playing the same character. And sometimes both are wrong. Other times one is right. Other times. Yeah. It's just a mess. Well. Whatever. I guess if there's any updates to the Vuzz, I'll pick a pen comment or something when it's 100% confirmed who some of these people are, if it changes from what we say here. I guess we should get here episode. Again. Yeah. Episode opens with Ishin at a captain's meeting giving his report on the Hollow. The Hollow White, who was actually all black, but you know what I mean. As Yamamoto's... Racist. Yamamoto's here. I mean, he doesn't say that. He says even though Ishin broke protocol, going against orders, his actions prevented collateral damage and more deaths. So it's it's all cool. I'm cool with it. But he asks Ishin, are you sure you're not forgetting anything else? And Ishin thinks about Masaki and is like, no, no, I'm not forgetting anything. Promise you nothing is being left out of the report. As it's obvious why he's keeping it a secret. At this point, Quincy's are presumed extinct for, well, the Soul Society kind of killing them all. Cut to Masaki. Because, yeah, cut to Masaki at school. She's worrying about Ishin. She wishes she at least got his name, as Ishin is thinking about her too, wanting to see her again so he could thank her properly. You see that die? It's love. Oh, it's okay. They finally updated it. They removed Josh from the IMDb. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. <laughs> no pen comment for you, <laughs> Well, cut to Masaki talking to her school friends, which one's listed as an heiress and others listed as GD Toronto. And these ones, I think are correct though they didn't say enough lines to really get a feel for it but sure about and, how and same up? for katagiri katagiri so, i'm pretty sure is megan though yeah, yeah. but yeah the, the lower post was removed so it's 100 percent confirmed question mark confirmed question mark <laughs> confirmed question mark <laughs> Well, anyway, Masaki's talking to one of their school friends about how her cousin, Ryukin, uh, what it's like to live with him, because he's the hottest guy in school, and is there something going on between them, even though they're cousins? Uh, get your SAO shit out of here! I already covered Al that this week! Alabama Master Race. I mean, 
Besides, this would have been better if Basaki was the voice by the character from SAO into the whole incest thing, but no. Wrong SAO voice actor. <laughs> anyway. She's like, no, me and Ri, you are just cousins. There's nothing between us. But before this talk could go on, Udahara just so happens to be passing by as Masaki starts to stumble. Clearly, something's wrong with her. He catches her and is just like, oh, well, I hope you're okay. I'm, I'm sure there's nothing wrong. Totes not. Anyway. Nothing at all. Cut to home as Izumi is talking to Masaki, asking if it's true that she fought a hollow to in order to save a soul reaper. Masaki's like, no, no, I would never do such a thing like that. I don't know why she turned southern there, but whatever. Well, it, it, it's because they're from Alabama, clearly, with all the Quincy incest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least with the royal bloodline thing, you kind of get why the Quincy's are doing that again. Whatever. Well, uh, Izumi's like, don't you dare lie to me. Ryukin realizes that means Katagiri must have said something as he rushes out to talk, confront her about it. And Katagiri's like, yeah, but she was injured. I had to tell your parents she needs to be treated or the Quincy bloodline could be tainted. And that's everything to the royal Quincy's. You need pure bloods, man. Like a balloon. What? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Ryu r rushes back to the room with Misaki and Izumi as Misaki collapses. They're like, hey, what's wrong? A hollow hole is opening up on her. That's weird. Ryuk is like, shit, I gotta find my father. Maybe he'll know what to do as he picks her up rushing out of the room. Izumi shouts, hey, Ryukin, put that thing down now. <laughs> Calling Misaki a thing, that's so rude. But it basically shows that, yeah, Zumi's already given up on her completely. She doesn't even know what's wrong with her unless she somehow knows what holification is, but... Fuck it. If anyone even did any doubt that Izumi's kind of a monster, more or less explains why Ryukin kind of grew up to be a dick, huh? Well... Yeah, well... When you're raised by a Nazi from Alabama. I mean, Ryukin at least wasn't a Nazi. He was warning Udiu in the past, like, don't look into this, just stay away, etc. Don't move to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, while out running around carrying Misaki looking for his daddy, a hollow attack! But Ishin saves him at the last minute. And this is one of the only cuts from the manga portion. Um, in Soul Society, before Ryukin ran out, it panned over there to show Rangiku found a note from Ishin saying, Hey, I'm going to go to Soul S or Human World for a bit, stretch my legs, make a bit excuse for me while I'm gone, would you? Which you all know why he went there was to see Misaki again, because he'd lock her. But yeah, Ryukin blames Ishin for getting Misaki hurt, saying if it wasn't for him, she'd be fine. Before they could have an altercation, though, Udahara shows up breaking it up, being like, Hey, I could save her if you guys follow me. So come on, follow me. What have you got to lose? They take Misaki and follow him, actually. What? You know how sad or something? No. Ah, oh, I thought you were going to say something about Udahara and being all Udahara-like. Because you know what's coming. Udahara exposition on what's really going on. He tends to do that. And look, we go to Bakfar, show the pendulum. That's in a second, though, because first inside Masaki's okay. mind, she's falling into a deep, dark void. Oh. As Hole it in one. Yeah. The hollow white wants to devour her soul. Cut to Udahara, as he states that he's been researching her symptoms for almost a hundred years. He explains Misaki will never be able to return back to being pure-blooded again. For she is undergoing holification, where a hollow soul is infused to another being's soul, destroying the boundary between them. It was an experimental thing that was done to create stronger soul reapers, transforming them into higher beings. 
which, you know, it's why Eisen's so obsessed with it, because God complex and all. He wants to become a higher being. Hell, of all people having that, I don't believe you. Just because it's true doesn't mean he has what- wait, what? He does have it! But it was abandoned because when a soul holifies, uh, eventually the soul will self-destruct because of the imbalance, and this is known as soul suicide. Basically, they lose control. We saw that with the hollow white monster from last episode. But Udahara discovered a way to stop the soul suicide by injecting a soul vaccine made from a Quincy's light arrow and a human soul. It will restore balance between the hollow and the soul. I'm going to be saying a soul a lot during this exposition. Yes. But because Masaki's a Quincy, the vaccine itself is not enough to work. In short, to keep her from holifying, she needs a strong presence to keep the hollow suppressed for the rest of her life. Ryukin instantly understands what this means, shouting, no way, there has to be another solution. And this is when he slips into his Kumamura voice, so we could tell right away, yeah, this is definitely Chris Swindle and not Josh. I mean, we could already tell right away. Yeah, but this definitely sealed it 100% that it was still Chris. Yeah. yeah, and during that exposition, we did get a backflash of the pendulum arc. Yes, I said backflash. Yep, because obviously he's referring to the Visards with how he was able to suppress yeah. that shit. So uh, it, it, it's it, it, they redo it, they recolor it in the animation style of the OP, so it's pink, pink white, and black. Yep. Didn't they do that for the other uh, flashbacks coming back too, or coming up at the end of yeah, the episode? Yeah, all, 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 all of them coming up, they do. Not to be confused with the OG, the original squad, which is just black and white, stylized filters. black and yeah. white. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure you all guessed, Ishin is the only one who can save her, because he has captain-level spiritual pressure. Udahara says to counter someone whose soul is a hybrid of a Quincy and a Hollow, they need the exact opposite. And the opposite of a Hollow is a human, the opposite of a Quincy is a Soul Reaper. So, he created a Gi guy for Ishin. Which, I guess he could have had the ski guy ready just in case a situation like this came up where a Quincy would be holified. It does seem like Udahara would always plan for contingency bullshit. Because at first I was thinking, I was like, wait, how did he know this exact situation would come about? But Udahara, so... Because he just does. Well, if Ishin enters it, his Soul Reaper powers will be lost as long as Masaki's alive, for his soul will be bonded to Masaki's and the Hollows with pure Reishi. Um, also, he won't be able to see Hollows anymore. But more importantly, an anime-only line was added, where Urahara explains the Hollow will also be passed down to her descendants as well. It's, you know, it's why Ichigo has a Hollow inside of him, and why it's all white. So... It also kind of explains why Yuzu and Cardin are spiritually aware. Or that could have been the Quincy heritage, I guess, too. You bake up your mind on that. But it does make you wonder, do they have hollows inside them, too? There's a hollow inside of all of us. Wait, wait. <gasps> oh my god! Especially you! But yeah, Ryukin naturally feels hopeless about it, saying there's no way Ishin's gonna do it. I mean, there's nothing but downsides in it for him. Who the hell would take up this deal? No one in their right mind would. As Ishii's like, okay, I'll do it. And this is when Ryukin goes, what? In a really high-pitched, silly voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even Udahara is shocked, like, what? Are you are you sure? Like, are you really happy with this? And Ishii's like, of course I'm not happy with this. But I'd never be able to forgive myself if there was someone I could save and I didn't try to save them. Mirroring what Masaki said when she rushed out to save him last episode. See? Mirrors are more fun than television. But yeah. He goes into her mind, and this is when he saves her by hitting the hollow with his own version of the Getsuga Tensho, proving that it's hereditary. And people have been describing this as a fire Getsuga. I mean, you said it's orange, right? I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's orange-ish... Yeah, so, and he does have a flames on Pacto. From what we've seen. Well, it's easy to infer, and flames are as depicted as 
orange for the most part. Yeah. Their souls are now bonded. And this is the other omission from the manga that I understand, man. So in the dreamscape, you'd get to see naked Misaki in the manga. You also get to see her cleavage a bit whenever he came out and she was sleeping and resting from the ordeal. But that's sense because we can't have our anime titties, man. Why can we have all the gore but not the fan service? <laughs> anyway... <laughs> All yeah, the four, none of the horrors. Slap. <laughs> but everything is fine. Ryukin comes out in the rain and is talking to Katagiri about leaving because he has failed. He left Wasaki with the Soul Reapers and wasn't able to protect her. As Katagiri starts crying, saying she can't bear to see him like this, that she belongs to him and that it, he's not failed and if he has then she's failed too and gotta give props to whoever voiced this character I'm pretty sure it was Megan here because she did do a good job making it sound like she was crying and getting overly emotional Maybe something some of the stupid people that posted those other ones are removing them now I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah Which, and how she was also added to IMDB just like Chris mhm mm Trust me, guys, a uh, being able to sound like they're genuinely crying is more rare than you think. So she was able to do it decently here. But yeah. Ryukin says to her, he's like, all right, that's enough. Let's go home. Just follow me. As we cut to Ichigo and Ishin, well, Ishin tells him the rest of the story, basically, about how after high school, Masaki went to college. She went to college, Dai. Yeah. Next she's gonna open up the cum bucket. <laughs> Damn it. But yeah, because of her uh, infection with the hollow virus, she was forced to leave the East, she does. Ishin, meanwhile, used his skills that he learned from the Soul Society to open up a clinic. And he had help from Udahara to learn other World of the Living skills, too. And Masaki kept visiting him during his time working. And judge from the still images during that scene, Uohara helped him open up that shop too. Wait, you mean... So I guess Uohara's shitty little shop brings in some money, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Remember, Soul Reapers go there to buy uh, goods. Like, he did, I take, to yeah. think, take money from Ruki in Season 1. If I remember right. But yeah. He says he never told her the truth about what really happened. Ishin told her that he lost his powers when he was banished from the Soul Society for screwing up with the, you know, hollow incident. But he says he's always been a terrible liar, so he believes she knew he was lying. But it was kind of a game they played. <laughs> Damn it. The game was he'd lie, she'd see through his lies, and then forgive him for him. And they would grow closer because of it. He says Masaki is like the sun. They actually did a good job showing how these two got together here, I think, in these two episodes. It's actually somewhat believable. You know. I mean, Ishin does scream fangirl bait, am I right? What? Yeah, he does scream blood fridge. I... Damn it. He didn't shout <laughs> Inferno Divider. I, I mean, he used to Inferno Zon Park Terrace close enough. And this is when we get the rest of the story where he's like, and then you were born, Ichigo, but I'm pretty sure you know the rest, which is why I'm gonna uh, infer it anyways and repeat it. You got your Soul Reaper powers through Rukia, uh, Udahara helped you get your Zanpakuto, and in Soul Society, you're Hollow Awakened. Also, it's because you're Hollow Awakened that the bond between Ishin and the Gi guy was broken, so he didn't need to worry about suppressing it anymore. Thus, he could become a Soul Reaper again. Which is why he was able to do it, that at the beginning of the Iran car arc. Because people were asking that question for years, saying if he was a Soul Reaper, why didn't he help Ichigo when he was nearly killed by Byakuya? And very back in Season 1. Or even potentially go to the Soul Society with him, that's why. He, he realistically couldn't. But yeah. Then he says, the last thing I need to tell you, Ichigo, is the real reason your mother died. Cut to credits! 
Except there's a post credit scene that's several minutes long, making one wonder why that's just mean. Just like, you just made me have to fucking fast forward. Such an asshole. Still skip button like on Netflix. Unless you're uh, watching this in on Japanese TV or something, in which case you had to sit through the two minute end credit sequence. <laughs> but yeah. Ichigo's like, wait, what do you mean? It is, she goes, well, you see, she wasn't supposed to die that day. She was a pure Quincy, meaning she was powerful as fuck. In fact, her blue Tvena was impenetrable. That's her defensive, the Quincy defensive ability. So, yeah, she even used it on the hollow white when it bit her, which is why her wound wasn't more grievous. So, how did she end up losing to Grand Fisher, you might ask? Well, on that very day, she lost her powers. Because of, I'm going to butcher this, Alsvenum, a Quincy selection process by Yuha, where the Quincy King regains his pulse after 900 years, then his mind after 90, and his strength after 9, where he steals the powers from Quincy's that he deems impure to get his strength back not nazis guys yeah this also made Uriu's mother katagiri confirming that yeah her and ryukin got together and i mean we knew that was gonna happen she was the rebound girl for him after all but yeah made katagiri fall ill and she died soon after this incident and it's how grand fish was able to kill misaki so Yuha is revealed to be the father of all Quincy's. Every Quincy has his blood in their veins, which means, yes, Ichigo is technically his great, great thousand years worth grandson of his. As Ichigo understands why he was called his son born in the dark. Sounds like an edgy title, doesn't it? I mean, they're Nazis. Of course, it's going to sound edgy. <laughs> Wait, what? Well... Ichigo thanks his dad for telling him everything and is ready to head back to Soul Society as Ishin is proud of his son and the growth he's shown. Those really nice scenes, man. The rain lets up as um, Ikumi shows up, or boss. Man, we have Izumi and Ikumi. I actually got mixed up several times looking at, it, looking at their fucking names. She shows up giving him a substitute pass. As Ichigo is ready with new confidence. And that's it. And the preview is by Zangetsu. And coming up next, I guess we're going to see where that leads. And the uh, season finale. Or core one finale, whatever you want to call it. The finale of finales, it's over for good. <laughs> for six months at least. No, it's gone forever. It's for at least seven months. Yeah. You know I'm saying that. I know, because the dub and when it'll start. But yeah, great fucking episode. This was really good. <laughs> um, definitely explained a lot. Uh, on the Like I said, the flashback episodes of Bleach are usually well done. And now it does retroactively make a little more sense about Aizen studying Ichigo because he was there seeing the hollow infect Masaki. So he's like, oh, okay, so a, a baby born between a Soul Reaper and infected Quincy. This could be interesting to watch for a bit. That doesn't excuse him claiming he planned every single one of Ichigo's battles in their outcome, though. That's I still think is bullshit. But him studying Ichigo at least makes sense. He did plan it, obviously. You believe him, right? Yeah. How could you not believe the guy who's a chronic liar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it makes sense for him to say that to us to get under Ichigo's skin to manipulate him during their fight, but about this episode, this episode was fucking great. I mean, hey, you saw the fight between Misaki and Grand Fisher, right? Those visuals were anime only. Even if it was just a short, like, scuffle, if you want to call it that, before she lost her powers. Yeah. So. A scuffle, indeed. Oh, the fan service! And that one scene with Ron Giku, and a couple of comedic gags being cut to keep the serious tone. Um, this is basically it. Again, really good episode. 
And I can't wait to see what happens next. MVP! I don't know. I think Patrick Seitz did good. Jeremy Lee did good. Both of them usually do good. And whoever the fuck was Katagiri did good in that scene too with Ryukin. But yeah. Coming up next, I uh, just one episode left. And then Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War will be on break. Forever. I mean, for six months. Seven six, months. Seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever the fuck. It'll be back. Let us know what y'all thought of this episode if you agree. Oh, no. I just like seeing uh, all this backstory shit because it gave more depth to Ryukin also, which is always nice. But all right, guys, thanks again for watching. Hope you all yourselves a great day. And hopefully we'll see you back here next for more Bleach. So till then, right, Chamber Room.